this video, we travel from Glendale, California to San Francisco. 385 miles. But we didn't do it all in one day. The first day we drove 268 miles to the little town of Santa Anella and the Motel 6 that's located there. After checking in, we headed over to the famous Anderson's Pea Soup restaurant, which, not surprisingly, is famous for its pea soup. The restaurant is housed in a giant windmill which can be seen from the highway. Here's a shot inside the restaurant. Here's a shot of Marion. And here I am. You can see the logo everywhere, even on the napkins. Here's something I bet you didn't know. Here's a look at the thick pea soup. I gotta admit, I'm not much on pea soup, but this was delicious. The next morning, we got up early to make the two-hour drive from San Anella to San Francisco. I love the view coming out of the tunnel and onto the Bay Bridge because I know we're almost there. It's funny, but every time we cross the Bay Bridge, the radio is playing Tony Bennett's song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. Okay, not really, but one time we did see a couple of Hell's Angels on their choppers, and that was pretty cool. After picking up Kim, we soon found ourselves at ground zero of the 60s hippie movement, the corner of Haight and Ashbury. At that corner is a clock, permanently set at 420. 420 is a code that refers to the smoking marijuana at the time 420, and also on the date April 20th, or 420. Am I high? Please don't lie. Or have my legs been rubberized? Tell me true, friend. Am I high? But enough about that. We were down in the hate, not to get high from all the weed in the air, but to get some breakfast. So we headed down to one of our favorite places, the Pork Store Cafe. Here's a picture of Kim in the Pork Star Cafe, and here's one of me and Marion. And here's what I had for breakfast. Drum roll, please. <laughs> the eggs in a tasty nest, which was pretty much a little bit of everything with two eggs on it. Next door to the Pork Store was a little coffee shop. I don't know about you, but my brain needs lots of hugs in the morning. Directly across the street was this sign for Hate Nashbury and these giant um, uh, legs sticking out of the shop window. Down, boy. Down. After that, we headed over to Chinatown to, what else, get something to eat and to take a look around. Next to the Manhattan Chinatown, the San Francisco Chinatown is the largest Chinatown outside of Asia and it is also the oldest Chinatown in North America. It is also the most densely populated area in the United States west of Manhattan. Take a walk down Grand Avenue, the main tourist street in Chinatown, to see all the stores, souvenir shops, restaurants, and the Chinese architecture. Here's a storefront in Chinatown that had several soldiers from the Terracotta Army on it. Oh yeah, and everywhere you look, there are red lanterns. Lots and lots of red lanterns. We finally ended up at the Hang Ah Tea House at One Pagoda Place. Here's a look at one of the many types of dim sum that we tried. Built in 1920, it is the oldest standing and functioning dim sum house in America. Here's a shot of Kim in the tiny little restaurant, and here we are. By the time we got back to the Sunset District, it was dinner time, so we stopped off at the King of Thai Noodle to get something to eat. Here's a picture of our egg rolls, cashew chicken, and pod CU. After that, Mary and I went back to our motel, the Greenwich Inn, located just off Motel Row on Lombard Street. There we checked in and got a good night's rest in preparation for tomorrow's big day. The next morning we drove about 33 miles south of San Francisco to the little town of Woodside. There we stopped for breakfast at a place called Alice's Restaurant. Originally built in the early 1900s as a general store, it was turned into a restaurant in the 1950s. It was named Alice's Restaurant in the 1960s after the famous Arlo Guthrie song of the same name. 
Here's one of the many signs on the wall. As you can see by this picture pulled off their website, from these t-shirts on the wall, Alice says it's a popular place with the biker crowd, especially on the weekends. All those t-shirts were for sale. I couldn't decide between the Steve McQueen one or the one with Marlon Brando on it. Here's a picture of a poster on the wall of Steve McQueen in the movie The Great Escape. Here's a picture of Kim at Alice's, and here's a picture of Marion and me. Here's my biscuits and gravy I had for breakfast, and this is Marion's bacon and eggs. Both were delicious, and I know we'll be heading back there again. You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. After that, it was back on the road. After a Garmin failure and a wrong turn, we ended up at the Big Basin Redwood State Park. Hi, we took a wrong turn and ended up at this nice little place called Big Basin. Beautiful. The redwood tree can grow to a height of 367 feet tall or about the height of a 35 story skyscraper. That makes it the tallest tree in the world. This picture of the three of us inside a burned out redwood will give you an idea of the size of the tree. Here's a shot of Kim looking at a cross section of redwood with important dates on it. This tree sprouted all the way back in 544. Let's see, there's 1492, 1579, 1776, and 1955. Mark Erickson born. Wait, what? <coughs> Next up was the highlight of the day, the Bigfoot Discovery Museum. That's right. You heard me correctly, the Bigfoot Discovery Museum. In fact, here's a believer right now. The tiny museum was full of books, charts, foot casts, and more. I realized that I was in an area that few of us had entered before. I've got to admit, I had my doubts until I saw this on the wall. I mean, if you can't trust the weekly world news, then who can you trust? Then I saw it. The Patterson-Gimlin film. What the Subruder film is to the Kennedy assassination, the Patterson-Gimlin film is to Bigfoot. Here's a clip of the film now. Next, I was down to Santa Cruz in the coast for a few more sites. First up was a surfer statue monument on Cliff Drive. Some bright neon flowers near the statue. Hey, and look at this, an awesome goodness little surfer girl. Just up the road is the surfing museum. Housed in a small, one-room lighthouse, the Surf Museum was established in 1986. There may be many surf museums, but this one in Santa Cruz is the original. Here's a picture of the 1941 Santa Cruz Surf Club. Check out the shark bite on their surfboard. This has got to be so cool to be able to do this. Just up the road from the surf museum is this beautiful natural bridge. Heading back to San Francisco, we stopped off at the Whale City Bakery, Bar and Grill in the little town of Davenport. There, we all tried their BLT sandwich. It was an excellent choice. Here's a shot of the inside of the restaurant. Also in Davenport is the Swanton Berry Farm. It's one of those places where you can go out and pick your own fruit. Just look at all those strawberries. They had them chocolate covered too. Besides the fresh fruit, you could also buy jam. And like the sign says, don't panic, it's all organic. Here's Kim posing as a giant strawberry. A little farther north, looking at the rocky coastline. About five miles south of the town of Pescadero, we came across the Pigeon Point Lighthouse. Built in 1871, the lighthouse stands 115 feet tall and is one of the tallest lighthouses on the west coast. Here's the 
is the Rocky Shore line at the lighthouse. Further up the coast, we saw this old pier and building at the town of Half Moon Bay. After finally arriving in San Francisco, we headed over to our favorite place ever to eat, the ice cream bar at 815 Cole Street. You think you might know what heaven looks like, but you don't. It looks like this. An ice cream bar hot fudge sundae. Here's a picture of Marion and her hot fudge sundae. And here I am with my little piece of heaven. And it turns out that heaven is located in a place where the sign turns different colors. Who knew? Well, that's it for this part of the 2017 trip to San Francisco video, part one. Watch for the second part, coming soon.